Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob from RV Talk Radio. This is episode 98. Glad to have you. Really appreciate having you here. Um, I gotta tell you, it's really great to see the growth of the channel, the subscriptions of the podcast has been wonderful. And I only have one person to thank, and that's you. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, interesting week going on. Uh, we've been kind of connecting with some other uh, podcasts and other radio shows and had a little bit of uh, observations about some of them. And uh, so let's, uh, let's start the show. Well, I have to laugh, or I don't know. I I, I get kind of confused out there, and I, and I'm kind of sharing this with you. I'd love to hear your comments and stuff. But so when we do our show on lifestyle, we talk about the different lifestyles, whether it's van living, whether it's uh, fifth wheels or motorhomes or million dollar machines. And uh, so sometimes when I'm talking about stuff, about equipment and uh, stuff because we have fairly new stuff we have a 2013 montana and uh i constantly get comments of people saying well rob you got the money to do all that kind of stuff and and uh, add equipment and and so uh i have folks that give me the impression that we have uh, we're more middle class let's say okay let's just leave it at that However, um, I watch other shows and for example, I was watching this RV show, um, the RV show USA and they have a podcast show too and, uh, very commercial ish. Um, uh, however, very knowledgeable people seem like very nice and pleasant people and they're doing a great job. So yeah, don't, uh, and of course they, uh, I talked to them a little bit uh, on stuff, and they're like, who are you? <laughs> so I'm just a peon to them. But that's all right. Anyway, <clears throat> but when I'm watching their show, I'm kind of like, oh, gosh, people, I guess I'm at a low-income kind of situation because some of the stuff just floored me. For example, they're talking about uh, a roofing product. I, I, I guess I'm... Uh, I'm not bad mouthing the product. The product's awesome and stuff. So they got this roofing product, um, and and certain dealerships will put it on for you, and it's got a lifetime warranty on it, which is great. I mean, uh, there's no doubt uh, leaks and water and stuff is definitely a terrible thing for RVs. So anyway, as we're talking about it, I'm just like, I'm trying to like, well, how expensive is this stuff? And so for the average, like my Montana, probably, I guess it goes on in a gray color and then it has to be painted to be white. Anyway, so they're kind of quoting like six grand and above to have this done, but it's got a lifetime warranty. And so I'm sorry, but I, I guess I'm not that well to do folks. For those of you who think that we're at a different level or something to me, that seems like a lot of money and so, um, I guess that's probably the difference between different shows and stuff like that. We kind of keep, we've kind of stayed private. We used to do some things with other companies and, um, uh, you probably remember in the days we did things with RV lock and we looked at other things, uh, and I don't, they just always seem to go in a way that, um, yeah, I can even tell when the people were giving us feedback, like that's all you talk about is RV lock, or maybe you're talking about go mechanic and all these things that we used to jump in. And, uh, we've just kind of found that, um, it's more of a headache and also causes, uh, um, people to not like to show if we're plugging in all these commercials and, and pushing a product and, but we'll still do it. I mean, we're a radio show, so uh, when that stuff comes up, but we do, I mean, we all like last, uh, episode, we talked about 
a company we ran into. And I kind of enjoy that because there's no money exchange. There's uh, We're doing it because we like one another and we help each other's channels and uh, we earn our income through <clears throat> uh, YouTube and, and other means. And, and, and this is not the only radio show we do. So we kind of combine everything to work together. And so we don't have that big draw of trying to get commercials. And commercials mean money or exchange of uh, ideas uh, to promote each other's channels. And, and we'll still be involved in that kind of stuff. But it just really stood out to me because probably because we don't do that in this show. Um, but we have. And so I felt like... Uh, um, you know, pushing these products that, uh, apparently I am poor, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, I have two cars and a house and a RV and, uh, a boat. I think I was doing all right, but I'm sorry, but that kind of money still makes me kind of like, Oh oh my gosh, I, I, what's wrong with just getting up on your roof, washing it and, and applying decor in different areas and, and, and painting it yourself. Um, I, I guess I, I'm pretty low class. I guess, <laughs> but that's how I gotta look at it. But um, and and so, uh, the other thing we really enjoy doing is uh, talking to, uh, just real people that are out there uh, doing different things. You know, we've had several people on the show like uh, Less Junk, More uh, Journey, and we've had the Freedom Theory, and we've had. Uh, uh, a couple other couples, and we got some new ones coming up. If I ever get around to getting the darn interviews done, um, and just talking about real life. And so, uh, the other thing I I don't know about you, but uh, like there was a RV park that they're talking to, and I know these are standard numbers, but they still shock me. And I don't know why. I'm, I I guess I still think gas should be fifty nine cents a gallon, but. Uh, when they're talking about RV parks that are $45, $50 a day, um, that, I don't know, for some reason that still shocks me. I guess I'm cheap. And I'm, I, this is how I am. But, um, you know, in a, a week's time, that's 350 bucks, And that's, you know, you may as well have a house mortgage if you're going to spend that kind of money. Um, but um, I guess that's why I did that. Anyway, <laughs> but... Uh, the other thing is, um, you know, and I guess I, I mean, it, it's like our boat when we put it up at Lake Powell and things like that, it costs us almost $400 a month just to put it in a slip. So, uh, I still think that's expensive. So I don't know. I guess there's something wrong with me, but, uh, um, I guess I, I like to get a lot of value of all of our dollar. And that's probably why I really appreciate you wouldn't believe it, but when I'm hearing about people trying to find ways to do their RVing in an affordable uh, way and lifestyles and, and, you know, and also utilizing like memberships and stuff like that, like a thousand trails can help you really keep your costs down because uh, this stuff can really add up. Of course, now RV parks uh, have weekly and monthly rates and that can significantly be better. But I know when we were down here in uh, our last year before we bought our house, uh, we we're paying about 950 plus uh, a month just for the space we had over in uh, uh, Fort McDowell area. So I don't know, it just seemed like a lot of money. And I, it seems like sometimes uh, these shows, um, I guess that's my big beef is, a lot of these shows that are regular shows uh, and these regular YouTube channels, it's just constantly, uh, they're talking about products, but they're really trying to sell you the product. Um, I mean, if you watch some of these channels, they'll immediately say, we have a link below from uh, Amazon where you could buy it yourself and it helps us out. And the same thing with these radio channels, you know, they're pushing these products because they're promoting them or... Um, uh, they're getting something in return and uh, whether it's money or whether it's a uh, exchange of traffic and stuff like that. So keep that in mind when you're watching these shows is um, I think I notice it more because I do these shows and, and like, for example, right now I have a, a, a radio broadcast group that's trying to work with me and they, it was funny. They immediately is like, oh, we just want you to put my our stuff on your network. 
why would I want to do that? <laughs> I mean, we work hard to get our listeners and we're kind of uh, picky about, you know, uh, making sure that the stuff is, you know, uh, significant to our whatever channel we're doing our podcast or radio shows on. And so, uh, you know, we're always got someone knocking at the door. And uh, I've actually found myself kind of ignoring it a little a little bit just because I know the relationship will be, well, we want this and you want this. And, and then a couple of weeks later, it's like, well, we didn't sell enough stuff or we sold enough stuff and we want to move on and see ya. Thanks for letting us be on your show. Use and abuse kind of thing. And so it happens over and over and over. And so uh, that's just something that we've noticed in the industry. But do be aware that when you're watching these shows, uh, make sh I mean, are they talking about products? Are they informing you about products or doing a DIY RV show on a product that really they're more interested in sponsorship or you buying the Amazon link down below? And so are their t intentions good or not? And, and maybe they're both. They can be. Uh, but I uh, I've, I've found it, um, I don't know, uncomfortable a little bit when I was watching some of these shows. Uh, but at the same time, I appreciate, uh, you know, because once you start doing a, a, a more commercial kind of broadcast or a podcast, then you have to start getting into your timing. And then you have to, uh, like us, we can run our show any way we want. But, you know, uh, as you, were, you become an affiliate, other shows and stuff, uh, time sequences are really important. It's like, okay, this segment's got to be only 10 minutes and no longer so we can plug in commercials. and uh, Or uh, we're going to let this section of the show go to another show. It's got to be no more than 14 minutes and things like that. And when you start seeing that, you know the motivation is uh, questionable to me. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just food for thought. And sometimes I wish we were that way, and other times I'm going, I'm glad we're not, because we've been there before. So, uh, yeah, we'll probably keep the format we got. But, uh, boy, uh, I was busy. I really enjoyed watching uh, uh, RV Show USA, they call themselves. It's the first time I've actually watched them before. Um, you know, when when you're really in, in, in um, uh, covered or blanketed in the RV industry, uh, uh, you can qu you become quite knowledgeable, <laughs> and uh, and that's very helpful to a lot of new people. Uh, my biggest worry is sometimes that they get out of touch, and and all these new people coming in all have different kinds of uh, uh, issues or concerns, and so that's why all the different shows are important to watch the different flavors, and uh, and we're just like another flavor. <laughs> so anyway, let's move on. Well, I uh, I mean, I'm one of the followers of uh, Freedom Theory, and I, I get a, uh, w and we've met them and uh, had them on our show before and stuff. So nice people, and uh, one of the latest crises they have, and that's <laughs> they they have a very crisis show, anyway, but very cute, um, is they broke their slide, and 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 that's one of the things I really really dislike about RVs is cause and effect <laughs> it's like uh for example um we had um a, uh, we we're at a rest area and we wanted to make lunch or something well we have to open up our slides a little bit to even get into the kitchen and stuff so we'd park as far away as we can in the trekking area so we could open the slides to have lunch and sure and heck, during the drive, uh, one of our remotes to our television fell on the floor and got, fell in such a way that when I opened up the slide, as it was opening, it caught the uh, uh, remote and, and crushed it. <laughs> it sounded terrible. And uh, it didn't hurt anything. Um, luckily, it gave way. But if it didn't give way, it would have damaged the slide mechanism. And, uh, and that's the same thing that's kind of happened with those folks. They had a, uh, they were opening or closing a slide and forgot to close a drawer on one of the cabinets. And as the slide came in, it caught it and then it uh, uh, caused it to go off its track and also break the motor mechanism. So 
I guess that's one of the things I really, really hate about RVs is if you forget one little thing during your processes, uh, the damage can be horrendous. And so uh, uh, I'm definitely a believer in RV checklists, but they just don't seem convenient. It's not like when you're traveling, it's kind of like, oh, let's, you know, let's take a break. Let's have, you don't have things planned out. Sometimes things just happen. Maybe you pull over and do things, or maybe you have a flat tire and you've had to pull over to change a wheel or something. So you go through procedures or, or open up uh, cabinets and do things that are not of the norm. And so you don't necessarily follow a checklist, you might say. And so that causes you to, uh, um, wave from your normal processes and you leave a drawer open or you forget to close something or you didn't lock the refrigerator doors right or the cabinets like in our RV we put little velcro strips around the cabinets to keep them from swinging open uh, another thing I, uh, we were, when we were first traveling we didn't do the little velcro strips around the thing and we had a large bowl that was a uh, <clears throat> glass i guess whatever but pretty beefy fall out of the cabinet come and hit the dining room table which put a little gouge in it and just disintegrate and we had glass everywhere um but i guess that's one of the things i'm really irritated uh when i'm uh, rving is processes so when you're looking at an rv i guess this is where i want to go with this is you got to look at the what's cumbersome about the process of opening and closing the slides and, and using it. And what if I would almost say pull, pull cabinet things open and stuff and then uh, activate slides and stuff and, and see how um, mechanically uh, involved it is to go through your processes of moving and traveling all the time. And be aware of like, uh, hey, if you leave one cabinet open and the sides come in, you could literally w <laughs> rip out a wall. Um, those are really, really important things to look at. And it's, you don't really think about that when you're buying an RV. It just happens once you have the RV and you get out there and life happens. Um, you know the old saying, uh, S happens. And and it does in RVing. And I, I do notice that... Um, um, the, some of the newer RVs seem to be more uh, inclined to think about the possibilities of things happening. But older RVs are, can be a little cumbersome uh, and they can also have funny mechanical things about them that if you don't follow procedure, you could literally really damage your RV and, and it usually you know, happens in a place that you're, it's not convenient. Uh, you know, you're pulling over to have lunch and you damage a slide at lunch and you're halfway between one spot and another in Alaska, you got a problem and you're not necessarily going to find someone who can help you. Uh, when I was watching the Freedom Theory, luckily they were fairly close to an RV re uh, repair place and it found, turns out they actually found one that was quite universal and quite friendly and was quite helpful to them. So, uh, and you can't necessarily keep your RV on their lots. Uh, they're fortunate to be able to stay uh, do that. But a lot of RV places do have uh, places where you can get your uh, rig worked on, and you can stay. Uh, they have actually uh, spaces or something uh, power set up where people can stay on the premises. So. I don't know what the legalities of that is. I don't know uh, if that's a problem for RV uh, repair places or not. Of course, it just takes up space, and plus, you got, you know, people living on your property uh, when you're trying to keep it secured. Uh, <laughs> it's, that could probably be an issue too. <laughs> so anyway, um, I don't know if I'd want to have a repair shop where you actually had somebody hanging over your shoulder the whole time trying to get something fixed, and it's like. Uh, Maybe they do that on purpose where they don't want you to be there. Uh, I wouldn't blame it because some people can be quite irritating. But yeah, um, when you're buying an RV, look at all the mechanics of it, especially when you're going through the process of closing and opening your RV uh, as far as winterizing it, as far as opening it up, um, closing it, uh, having lunch in it, stopping at a rest area, and then going through that procedure what kind of devastation could you do if you don't 
follow one of the procedures right. You forget to close a drawer, forget to close a cabinet, forget to uh, put straps on your uh, cabinet doors. Uh, you really need to look at that because that really could hurt you during your traveling time. And uh, I've seen it time and time again. And uh, uh, just food for thought. So the other day, I, uh, uh, I, I've met people that have done this before, and and I've actually done it once, and I believe me, I only did it once, <laughs> is when you're traveling with an RV, um, like a trailer or a fifth wheel, and you have pets, do you make the pets ride with you in the cab of your truck, or do you let them or keep them in the RV while it's moving? <clears throat> and I know this is kind of a controversial gray area. Uh, some people actually have more than one pet, or are like well, not Sherry and I, we had a cat and a dog. But I've seen people with three, four, five dogs and cats <laughs> in their RVs, and and the only way they could travel is actually have them ride in the RV or the fifth wheel, or or trailer. And, uh, of course, when we had a motorhome, I mean, they rode in that, too. And so, what's, I guess, what's the difference? But uh, I know the first time we went RVing in 2006, we tried to make the cat and dog ride in the back. And we did a half a day. Uh, this was in Washington State. It went up the uh, I-90 Pass, uh, Squamish Pass, and, and camped up at Lake Easton area. And... I think the dog got sick and the cat was terrorized and we learned right away that we needed to let them ride up in the truck. Uh, and um, anyway, I don't know uh, health reason wise and stuff. I mean, uh, I've never actually ridden in the back of a fifth wheel <laughs> while it's in motion, but I imagine it can be quite herring, um, you know, experience as it's uh, swaying and moving around and, uh, uh, Maybe some pets are good at that and stuff, but I still recommend that you have carriers. Now, Cinder, she just has the whole back seat to herself. And yeah, I understand some people don't have trucks like that and stuff. And our cat, we would put her in the carrier next to Cinder in the back seat. And that's just how it was. When we left, that's uh, how they traveled. We just didn't put them in the RV. And I don't know if there's any laws involved in that. Maybe there should be. Um, of whether you should let your pets ride in those places. But I guess it's also like, all right, if you're driving a 40-foot motorhome and the animals are are running freely in there, what's the difference? I don't know. Um, maybe suspension-wise and things could be different. Um, but, yeah, not to mention that you get on a windy road or bumpy road and stuff, that your animals could actually get sick. <laughs> and that's not fun either. But I, I love to hear your comments and... and uh, your solutions and maybe you just say oh mine are just fine back there and others uh, say no way we bring them up front and put them in carriers so i i'd love to hear your feedback on that <clears throat> uh, i love to hear if you know any rules and regulations about uh what's proper to do with our animals when we're traveling uh that would be an interesting subject and uh hopefully i can find an expert out there that might be able to share some uh, insights about that so yeah Pets, animals, traveling, should they be in the RV or should they be up front in your truck? I'd like to hear that. So I have a subject here I kind of like to talk about. It kind of brings out the, the good and bad in people, but it's kind of a mixture of two things. One is prepping or being prepared for a disaster. And two is people that hunt or eat meat and things like that so um even though sherry and i you've heard that we've become vegan and uh we call it like an 80 20 vegan and it's a program we actually started so uh sometimes we go out there and sometimes it's hard to avoid things like milk and cheese and it's okay but i don't want to talk about that actually what i want to talk about is um rving uh for example our RV is up in Central Oregon, and I wish it was closer in some cases, but we, uh, and I did a video on this too, is we literally always keep extra case of water, 
uh, sometimes as much as we can. If we're in it, I mean, we also got the water that's in the tank and stuff. But we also keep a at least a week's worth of dried food in it or one of those survival things in case of a disaster. And, and an RVs actually, uh, in some cases, can be a good refuge, if you want to say, uh, if something was to happen. And let's say something terrible happened in California and, and you lived in California and you want to get away from it and still have a place to live and you had an RV, it's an ideal mobile home to get away from an area that's under crisis, um, not to mention you know, hurricanes and things like that. Uh, so prepping, uh, I, I highly recommend it, and even if you're in an RV, to at least give yourself a week or two of uh, uh, dried food or something like that, and also extra water, keep it in your lower section of your RV, or in cupboards or something like that where you are carrying extra water beyond what's in your tank. Uh, one is your tank might be low when a crisis happens or two, um, maybe the water gets contaminated or something like that and you can't pull water to put in your tanks. Uh, having spare water, you know, is, is, is really no excuse not to do it. It's so easy to do. And it comes in so many different forms. You can get it in bottles or bigger bottles, two gallon bottles, and just Put it away somewhere. Hide it somewhere. It's not like you, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of room. It is heavy, but it's advisable that you did something like that. And, of course, that applies to your house, too. So Sherry and I, we keep two-week supply of dried food. And you can just buy the, the, the kits. Uh, and we also keep several cases of water in a spare bedroom. Um, and yes, we are weaponized and, and there's another area. So <laughs> prepping weapons and, um, hunting or eating meat. Uh, so I, I know it's really easy for people to judge people that hunt. And I've been a hunter for years. I don't hunt anymore. And I have a friend that's on Facebook that goes hunting every year and he always shows his deer and all that stuff. To me, it doesn't bother me. And I know him really well. When he gets a deer, nothing goes to waste. And so uh, as far as the hunting uh, regulations up in Washington, uh, my dear friend Don is up there. Uh, he, one, is a very good hunter. Two, when he hunts and shoots something, he, never, uh, he uses a, a firearm, never misses his target and hits it direct and it's a quick quick thing and he uh takes really good has a lot of pride in when he shoots he kind of likes to go for a trophy deer but he eats everything and i'm not sure what he does with the uh, uh skins and stuff like that but uh and i'm sure if he gets a really good deer he may have it mounted or you know taxidermy service but some f folks say, oh, that's terrible. Or, or if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, a lot of people are against animal cruelty. And, and I understand that. But, you know, let's take those three subjects, prepping, firearms, and uh, knowing how to hunt, let's say, or firearms. And there was a disaster. Let's say... I'm on right now. Let's say all of a sudden we have our power grid go down. And, you know, that can happen in another state and still affect you in a, in a state that's a couple states away if the power grid's hit right. Uh, it could affect uh, the southeast big time here. Anyway, uh, who's going to be more popular? Those people that are advocates, those people that um, have spent so long and have no idea where our meat comes from or they didn't prep or didn't prepare at all, didn't put anything in their uh, uh, cupboards to prepare for time being out. Maybe they don't have any way to cook. No propane stoves, which you also I, sub I didn't talk about that, but it's always good to have like some of those propane canisters and a Coleman stove. Uh, of course, in an RV, you kind of have that, but uh, being uh, mobile too, uh, or in a house, it's, it's a good idea to have a propane stove and some canisters and stuff so you can heat water because it's going to be all about water and food, <laughs> really, and protection. And uh, so suddenly, these people that we look down on, these people that we scarf at, that, oh, they kill animals or they uh, um, 
have firearms and stuff like and I'm talking about responsible people they're going to be the heroes the whole world would change it'd be inside out you know all of us that sit around and judge these people uh, and uh, even these people with RVs that are million dollar RVers and stuff well suddenly when they can't fix their RV and they can't pull it into a and they can just you know throw the cash out and have someone fix their RV and they don't know how to do any of that stuff they could be hurting puppies and suddenly all these people that are hands-on and D, um, DIY and the ones that can actually do this stuff uh, or do-it-yourself projects uh, they're gonna be the heroes and I don't think I think it's important that we never forget that never I don't think that looking down at someone that likes firearms or looking down at someone that likes to hunt is it, and does it properly the proper hunter the ones that follow the rules and, and the regulations and stuff and those that enjoy firearms that do it as a hobby um, responsibly and most people do um, and those you know those that prep and those that keep at spare water and things like that um, First of all, who we judge, I guess. <laughs> of course, on our talk show, you think we judge all the time. We just talk about stuff. Uh, I, th I, I think some of that stuff's getting lost as far as uh, as those kind of uh, oh, skills. Uh, just like, you know, when I talk about uh, there's not a lot of people that can do skilled labor anymore because everybody's trying to get degrees and, and think they'll be millionaires by the time they're 30 and it's just not true uh, but these people that have skills the whole world would turn inside out and we're so close to that it could happen and, and you see it when you uh, the hurricanes come and just hits a certain section but you know as soon as this power grid goes down, uh, well, I'll say goodbye to Rob's podcast, say goodbye to communicating with the world, for, say goodbye to television, and, and uh, even radio broadcasting would be an issue. Um, food, uh, you know, say goodbye to grocery stores. They can't uh, refrigerate anything. Suddenly, you're on your own. And some people will say, well, I guess I, I really wouldn't want to be alive anyway. Well, it's our human nature to survive. And so <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know. I guess a lot of p times I get frustrated with the people that judge these folks that are, um, I'll even call them rednecks, you might say, uh, prepared, hands-on people that know how to at least survive a little bit, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and of course it kind of falls into these people that know how to boondock but uh, you know they're, uh, they're limited in what they could do a lot of them um, they may use the solar and stuff like that and uh, that's a good thing uh, but uh, generators may uh, be an issue because of fuel might you know fuel comes out of a tank and it's got to be pumped into the pump and a pump is electric uh, pretty soon getting fuel will be a problem so if you're boondocking eventually you're not going to be able to move your rig anymore uh, fuel will be scarce so I don't know I guess uh, if you judge these people in a negative way I would think twice because if something happened you'd want them as your best friend <laughs> that's the first thing second part is there's a lot of things that if you're not that kind of person but can adapt a little bit then take the time to do a little bit of prepping Take the time to put spare water and stuff. At least be able to hold out for at least two weeks while the power grid might be getting repaired and stuff. If it's that kind of situation, that's good. If it's long term, you got a problem. But um, you know, uh, I mean, everything would be harder uh, if you don't know a little bit of first aid or you can't handle seeing the signs of blood or someone getting hurt. You don't know how to do first aid. And basic things like that, or learning uh, CPR and, and things like that, um, you're gonna have a problem. You're gonna have a big problem. And you know, there's a lot of crises going on in the world. I'm not talking gloom and doom and stuff. It could happen from storms. It could happen from a solar flare. It could happen from a some uh, or terrorist uh, hits our power grid. Or, or the biggest thing is cyber. 
uh, attacks and things like that. And I'm not even talking about war and things like that, but this stuff could happen. And uh, the best case scenario is temporary. The worst case scenario is the long term. And uh, you will find society and things reverse. And suddenly you've got to protect where you live, protect the people you love, feed the people you love, and uh, understand that you may have to eat uh, birds, or you may have to eat a chicken, or kill a pig, or, or kill a deer, or, or, or something like that. Do you even know how to do that? Could you do it? And, and how would you prepare to meet? And, and you know, it's one thing to even have all that kind of stuff and not get yourself sick. Uh, you can't just drink water anywhere. Can you pull water from a source and purify it? Uh, those are pretty important things to maybe learn and maybe do a little research on and get better at. Maybe you don't like guns and stuff. i tell you one thing. If the grid went down for months and there's people out there who will be just like you that don't have any of these skills and they want to survive, they're going to start taking it. And how are you going to keep someone from taking what you prepared for? And it will come down to that. And people are just that way. Just look at hurricanes and the looting and things like that. You go, how could people do that? Well, if they're hungry enough, they'll do anything for their families and survive. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's food for thought. But RVing um, is a good way to understand um, some of the things you'll need to know. Uh, one is how to fix things. Um, when you're boondocking uh, to get off the grid and things like that, there's great opportunities to learn of what you're capable of doing. And if you're not willing to do some of that stuff, uh, make sure you're good friends with somebody that does know how to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I could see if something was like that would happen, it would become communities where people have different skills. There's some people that can protect the colony where another can help feed the colony, another uh, can help build things and engineer for the colony, and other than prepare food. It really will come down to shelter, food, and water, and protection. That's gonna be it. I mean, that's simple, but not so simple. So, you know, I, I monitor a lot of channels and I watch a lot of shows and stuff. And I watch all levels of different kinds of RVing. And one of the things I find uniquely um, um, entertaining is how people eat. So I was just watching a, a video of a gal that was uh, uh, showing what she was cooking for dinner. And it was one of these instant macaroni things. And her uh, reasoning was, you know, my I cooked for my kids for years and I'm on my own. And... I just don't like to cook and I don't want to eat out. <clears throat> and so one of the things I, maybe because I'm more aware of it lately, especially since Sherry and I have kind of changed our diet, and being that, you know, our age, whether you're 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, uh, we are what we eat, there's no doubt. So one of the things I see a trend in as far as watching videos. Now, remember that only... Five ten percent of RVers or van dwellers and stuff actually do videos. So there's ninety percent out there that we don't really know what's going on. And and I have met a lot of those ninety percent people, and uh, they appear to um, be eating pretty regularly and and healthy. But at least as far as some of the shows I'm watching, um, there's some really bad. It seems like eating habits out there. Uh, one of the ones I see pretty good meals coming out of is like Freedom Theory. Uh, she likes to cook and she uh, seems to be uh, uh, quite versatile uh, as far as their diet. And health reasons probably promote that a little bit too. So folks that have health issues and stuff like that probably are more aware of what they're eating and their intakes are than folks that are just out um, living um, the freedom world of RVing um, where I'm seeing, you know, pizzas and instant foods and stuff like that. So uh, I don't know where I'm going with this <laughs> other than the fact that I think as an RVer, if you're coming out here and depending on what kind of lifestyle you're, you're choosing as an RVer, 
Uh, I think you also want to keep in mind your nutrition. And the older you get, the more that you probably be more aware of your of what you're eating. And, and, and um, of course, you know, uh, if you watched our videos and stuff, Sherry and I, uh, over the years, have gained weight and things like that. And, and pretty soon it's uh, um, apparent that we either need to change our ways or we're not going to be around uh, the enjoy our grandchildren very long. So uh, our awareness of food uh, in the RV, we're pretty fortunate with our fifth wheel. We have a pretty good sized refrigerator and kitchen area and stuff like that. So we, um, we stocked up pretty good with good foods and we're able to store it properly. Uh, some of the smaller rigs I could see where they're confined with smaller ice boxes and stuff like that could be an issue and uh, having fresh fruits and stuff like that. But so many things you can buy frozen or can now that are still fairly good for you. Uh, a lot of them will have a little bit more salt intake than you really probably want. But anyway, uh, I think also if you're becoming an RVer, I don't know if enough people keep in mind their nutritional needs and what uh trying to eat healthy and and trying not to eat out as much now you know if you're well to do in your pocket uh always has a few bucks in it and eating out is something you really enjoy um uh, that can be good and bad too <laughs> but um for those on a budget and things like that if you really want to keep your costs down one of the big things is not eating out and but at the same time, you should also try to make sure that you're eating well. Uh, if you're going to be out here, you may as well enjoy this lifestyle as long as you can, uh, healthy. So when you're buying an RV, I think a, a big thing would be like, what's this kitchen got for me? I mean, can I store food in it? Uh, what other extra items I could buy, like a mobile freezer or ice makers and things like that, that would help me uh, sustain a better eating lifestyle? Um, so I can be an RVer for a long, long time without having health issues. Or if you have health issues and have a certain diet that you need to try to keep up on, um, do you have the equipment? Does your RV have the equipment to support your eating habits? Now, if it's junk food and things like that, I think almost any uh, kind of RV can sustain that. But if you're trying to eat healthy and having a refrigerator and freezer and, and, uh, room to cook and prepare food, uh, especially fresh vegetables and things like that. Uh, can you store meat? Um, all those things are pretty important to consider when buying an RV. So it's kind of this food for thought. This is just kind of thinking out loud, but um, man, I sure see a lot of people just eating some real bad food. And, um, you know, they're, if they're you know, they're probably perfectly happy and stuff like that, but the next video will come out going, I don't understand why I don't feel good. Well, I can understand it because I ate that way for a while too. And um, uh, you just feel groggy and you're gaining weight and lazy and you're not uh, getting headaches, not sleeping well, uh, having bathroom issues, things like that. Uh, all that you know, can really be addressed by eating better and then finding out what's best for you. But yeah, keep in mind when you get an RV, what are you going to do for food short term and long term? I came across a report uh, just uh, today, actually, about something that's kind of concerning and it definitely would apply to the RVers. And I believe it's happening in Michigan uh, where it appears, and I'm just kind of just reporting on what this story is about is um, they're having trouble while well, a guy did a video about his wife and daughter that almost got kidnapped in a target parking lot and it appears that it's part of a Somalian kind of uh, um, uh, trafficking uh, women trafficking prostitution thing where they're kidnapping people and uh, uh, his biggest concern is like they're in a parking lot and they just kind of drive up in their cars and surround the people and try to kidnap uh, girls uh, in this uh, scenario. Which also means if it can happen to a target parking lot, it can happen in a Walmart, it can happen anywhere. So here we go with a whole nother problem to worry about is 
of course, safety, and especially in places like parking lots and stuff like that. And so I know a lot of folks that do, you know, the boondocking overnight in Walmarts and stuff. And if you're with your family, especially if you have your family and kids, um, if you're uh, a woman, uh, it shouldn't be this way. And I'm just saying it. Um, I'd be on high alert and careful and even give yourself some protection. But uh, <clears throat> I know that a lot of times they say with RVers, they kind of want you in the back and kind of a low profile. But at the same time, that seems like a scenario where if this is a new growing trend, what it appears to be, um, where uh, uh, women trafficking, trafficking uh, issues are coming up, um, in different states, I'm sh and it sounds like it's gro a growing issue. Um, it's something to be aware of, and unfortunately, it causes us to have to change our ways a little bit. But you know, if you're uh, got a family and um, you have a woman with you, uh, and you're doing an overnight thing in a Walmart or uh, some of these other places that let you stay overnight, I would. Not make it real, cl you know, clear to everybody that may be watching you in the parking lot that you have a woman, or you are a woman by yourself, or your f family, which could be your wife and your uh, daughter, uh, to advertise that that's the scenario, and certainly don't send out any indication that they're alone in the RV, and that's sad, and 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 I, I know this day and age is, it shouldn't be where. Uh, a woman should have to worry about this thing and, and, and because of equality and things like that. And I understand that. But at the same time, um, I just put myself in your shoes. If it was my, my wife, I'd certainly do what I could to uh, make sure that I don't put her in a scenario that she can't control. <clears throat> and that doesn't make her any better or worse than me or uh, all that. It's, and I'm sure that there may be scenarios that um, men have these issues too but in this case it's a uh, awareness so be aware that it's a growing trend out there that uh, kidnapping uh, women and, and young uh, women for trafficking is out there and it's you're like oh, I hate to it couldn't happen to me it sounds like it, this guy wasn't too surprised about that either uh, I think I'll go ahead and put a link to that video in our description and um, let you uh, judge for yourself. But it, it's another awareness or you know, part of that prepping thing. Uh, can you protect yourself? And are you, uh, um, you know, imagine this is modern times. Imagine, like I said, if things weren't so modern, uh, what life could be like. So can't, you know, are you prepared for this kind of stuff? What are your habits? What are you doing when you're boondocking? What are you doing when you're staying overnight in these Walmarts and stuff like that? That could help protect yourself from having an incident like that. That would be terrible. So, yeah, anyway, uh, uh, once again, in the description, I'll put a uh, link to that video. Well, that kind of wraps up this uh, week's podcast. I appreciate you guys for listening. Uh, I know this maybe seemed like a gloomy and doomy kind of radio show. I didn't mean it to be. It was kind of meant to be helpful uh, between the prepping and, and uh, things that are going on out there. We monitor a lot of this stuff because we have other radio shows like we have a new show like Arizona Talk Radio uh, and other shows too that we constantly monitoring stuff and we get exposed to things that you may not catch on the internet because it takes a lot of time and it's not exactly the funnest thing in the world but uh it brings up some interesting subjects and that's what we're all about here with with this show so anyway i wanted to uh, uh once again thank you uh, our subscriptions are growing like crazy and it's really nice to I have new people on board. I hope you enjoy the show. We love your comments. Good, bad, or indifferent. All we ask is you be professional. Uh, we also added to our description an email address if you want to talk to us uh, directly, or you can talk to us from our Facebook page and the messaging. Uh, great way to contact us. If you're interested in, uh, <laughs> in uh, advertising, or if you uh, like to be on the show, uh, that's a great way to contact us through the email. Uh, uh, 
connection we put on there, which I've never put an email on there before. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, uh, I hope everybody enjoys your uh, your RVing experience. If you'll be thinking about becoming an RVer, you won't regret it. And the biggest thing of all is be safe and have fun. Talk to you next week. Bye now. Hey, thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. We love our listeners. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the world. We'd appreciate that. Anyway, talk to you later. See you next week. Bye.